and you can't win all the time. Any investment you ever do, it's not going to be right all the time. In fact, if you're trying to make it right all the time, you're not doing it. Yeah, yeah you've got to appreciate the loss at some points as well, and the loss is always going to be a game later on. Welcome to the Property Developer's Secrets <laughs> Podcast. Welcome to the Property Developer's Secrets Podcast with myself, Andy Cook. And myself, Lloyd Girardi. So we've got another episode. Um, I think this is episode 34, isn't it? I yes, believe it is possibly. Yeah. So, but how they add up, you know? I know. You, you just keep chewing them out and suddenly we're at episode 34. So that's great. Hopefully it's good value for you guys, but we thought that we'd do something a bit different today. Um, we are going to go through some of the books that have changed things for us over the last sort of 10 years now. So audio books were a real revelation for us, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, we've um, really got into audio books in the last nine years since starting the business, really. I never used to read beforehand. Like when I was an LED lighting salesman, I never read a book. Um, even when someone said I'll read that, it'd be like, Ugh, really? But audio books, absolutely love. Going out for a run, audio book on rather than music because I feel like I'm listening to the book rather than music keeping me running. And it takes my mind off running because I generally hate running. So the book has really pushed me, and especially when I was uh, training for the marathon. That used to be the audio book in and then suddenly doing 12 miles and stuff. So... Um, yeah, the books and audio books have been a revelation, a revelation in our mindset. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I suppose my journey with that is that you know I, I, I'm I'm a tradesman, came up through the trades. I wasn't particularly well educated before that. You know, um, my enlightenment, if you like, has been through running my own business. I started at thirty with Redbox, the development company, and then you know seven years later we started up the white box stuff and all that yeah. in 2014 and i was really busy as a tradesman i'd never read a book before that i would never read a book anyway in fact um, i bet one of the books you have read is the uh b and q how to do it book well <laughs> i've read bits of that yeah. <laughs> yeah i never read it if cover to cover yeah. but i certainly have one tucked away in the car yeah um but you know i didn't you know it's not my background reading books i didn't you know you self you teach yourself you know i self talk to that i'm not a reader so, you know, I taught that in myself um, and it was audio books, like you say there, it um, it really gave me the colour of the story and you know, I don't listen to music at all now, really. Um, not that I was ever mad on music, but, you know, like you say, I, I, same thing for me, really. I try and listen to something every day. Like, it's like anything, you know, you go through phases. Sometimes I'm in a phase where I can't get enough of it. You know, you yeah. chew through audio books and then you go through a phase where it goes off a little bit and... You know, yeah. like you can never be on on anything all the time. But um, yeah, we've chewed through loads of them on Audible. But then that's actually come full circle with me now. And I've started over the past, I think it started with the 75 hard really for me. I started actually reading physical books. First time in my life, I've never really read yeah, you know, cause you physical can't, books. Yeah, because you can't listen to a book on the 75 no. hard. So it forces no, you to No, you have read to read it 10 pages a day. Yeah. And, and I've found that that's actually been the next level, you know, again for me. I, I still listen to audio books or podcasts. I do a lot of podcasts, obviously. Um, and I try and get some content out of them every day um, as a consistent thing, but I do my 10 pages. You know, 10 pages to some people listening to this, it's perception, isn't it? Some people it'll be, you know, 10 pages, that's nothing. I could do that, you know, Deb, my wife, she can, she could yeah. listen, uh, read that, sorry, in, you know, a few minutes, like you know, literally whip through yeah. it. Um, for me, I have to actually, you know, it's not been something I've done all my life, so I have to think about it. It takes me longer, but I take it in better. You know, like uh, Matt Kavanagh, um, you know, he's been oh, on one of these speed podcasts. Read. He, I think he, his challenge, I do 10 pages a day. He's doing 200 pages a day. Yeah. Like for me, that's like mind blowing, yeah. but that's normal for some people, isn't it? So, you know, whatever the point you're starting at, whether it be audio books, whether it be physical books, to just do a little bit each day and get, you know, it's just about injecting that positivity into you. You know, I do it in the morning. So it yeah. kind of sets the day up really well, doesn't it? Yeah. And I'm the same. I'm not a good reader. Um, I just, even like, uh, reading storybooks to the kids and I have to stumble on words or not have to but I stumble on words sometimes I'm like mm. bloody hell my eight year old can read better than me but yeah that's uh, that's why I love audiobooks as well mm. um, so yeah let's let's look at the top three audiobooks then that have changed the way we think um, they're not necessarily going to be property development related or property related because they are mindset books and they are self development books so yeah, Let's we've go. taken lots of different things from lots of different books, haven't we? Yeah, um, I'm going to go to my Audible it. library. I'm going to start it. You start. Because if I don't start, you'll take one of mine, so I'm getting <laughs> in there first. Because they do cross over, don't they? Like, you know, we do yeah. like the same sort of stuff. But for me, one of the transformational ones, which really helped with mindset, 
it really helped with like the physical training stuff because that's a journey we've been on the last few years as well and again when i was a um you know when i was a a, a, a self builder you know a, a, and um a tradesman tradesman if you like yeah. yeah um on the tools i didn't have time for all this so when i've come off that got a bit of time freedom got the team working around us um but the one for me was david goggins can't hurt me yeah like it's just it was a game changer in fact i'm due i, I have read it a couple of times but i'm due again yeah because it just sharpens up that focus and i remember it was the same sort of time that i started crossfit and you know it just made me feel like i was working at too low a level like i thought i was doing all right i thought i was pushing myself yeah. and then you listen to that and you're like oh my god i'm only using like 40 percent of what you know got in me i didn't even realize it and you know every time like a, a workout hurt i just got like have a word with myself and just think you know David Goggins wouldn't accept that and it just like almost like turbo boosts you to the next level and gets you through that pain barrier yeah so for me that was a and you know that guy had some unbelievable stuff going on in his life and change as well yeah. so he's uh, so certainly come through adversity yeah yeah I mean he's got another book as well never finished I haven't actually fin- I've never started never finished <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah there's another one actually which I saw earlier yeah I haven't actually got around to that one so yeah maybe instead of reading the second one the first one I should yeah. do the second one yeah yeah I'll, uh, I've got a few credits on the Audible. We'll download. And that's another thing. We share our Audible account as well. <laughs> We're like an old <laughs> should man. We, yeah, couple, should we? we admit that? Um, <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, yeah, my, I suppose one of my favorites as well is the, is Money, Mind Over Money, sorry, by Claudia Hammond, um, which for me growing up, I didn't respect money. I, I knew what it was. I knew you had, like, I dreamt of, like, having loads of money because every kid I think did as a as a kid um but I never respected it I never knew how to hold on to it I never how, knew how to invest it I never knew how to manage it properly um but then starting the business then investments I sort of learned how to invest and obviously property is a great investment and the mind over money book really goes into psychology of of money and how pe- uh, one person might perceive it differently to another person like one of the great bits in there is um, if you said to anyone in the street, tell me a figure that's a lot of money, like that figure will be different for every single person. So someone might say 100 quid is a lot of money to them, where someone else might say it's a million pounds is a lot of money. So a lot of money is different to every every person. Um, but I've, I've learned that you've got to let money go for it to flow. Um, and yeah, rather than kind of, spending 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 you've got to sort of see where it's coming back as well but that book is fantastic in terms of getting your mind into money and understand money like money should not be a taboo uh, taboo subject i i I think one of the old traditional sayings which i think is just completely wrong now i understand it like you is you know save the pennies and the pounds will save themselves you know such an old school like you know parents and parents parents generations way of thinking when they worked in like the industrial revolution all that kind of stuff you know that isn't the way you know when we've learned about, um, you know, that, that, that you've got to let money flow. I remember when we first got told that, yeah. you know, you, you've got to let, and it was, um, do you remember his name? Peter. Peter, yeah. It was at, um, Peter Hogan. Peter Shout Hogan. Peter it Hogan. was at, uh, years and years ago at the... Money Magnet. <laughs> money Magnet That's day the one. course we went to. It was one of the first courses we ever went to. It is, it? yeah. And, and it just always stuck with me, you know, like where there's just a day, it was just about simple principles, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, nine years ago or something like that. And I, and I think it, was, it stuck with me because it was such a jarring concept because it was like, oh, no one's ever told me. I've never thought of it like that before. You know, yeah. if you try and hold on to something, you're not letting it um, work for you, are you? You're not letting it, and you can't win all the time. Any investment you ever do, it's not going to be right all the time. In fact, yeah. if you're trying to make it right all the time, you're not doing it. Yeah. So, you know, hence why it's got to flow. And the good ones will then, you know, bring in more than what you need. But yeah. you've got to take a few bad ones on the chin with it, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you've got to appreciate the loss at some points as well. And the loss is always going to be a gain later on. Mm. Um, a loss is only a loss if you stop. Yeah, so. yeah, we've gone off topic a little bit yeah. there. But yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. That's what it's about. Uh, right, I'm going to change the rules a little bit. I'm just Ooh. letting you know now. I was just thinking about it when you were spouting on about money there. Um, so three audio books this is, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm starting to think about what three it is because um, you only told me that as we started the goddamn podcast. Um, <laughs> Standard. <laughs> but I've got my three audio books, but then I'm like, well, I've got a couple of physical books I've read, which are different to audio books. Yep. So we're going to do three audio books and two physical books. Okay. Okay. So, because okay. I know what ones I want to say. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think of two books now. Yeah, that well, you not can do audio. that while I'm talking. Right, so my second audio book is Shoe Dog 
by Phil Knight. Yeah. So it's uh, Phil Knight is the guy who you know set up and invented Nike, as it would be in his world. In our world, it's Nike, I suppose. I suppose he set it up so yeah. he can call it what he wants. It should be yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Nike. Tiger. Um, yeah, and but he started with uh, what is it, Omnisaka Target uh, Tigers, yeah. didn't he, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And it's his story of being a entrepreneur businessman but you know just a, a lad who was in you know running running shoes and had a, a passion for running and all that kind of stuff didn't he so and you know it, his success you see him now and you see you know he's he'll be hanging out with tiger woods and you know all the the guys jordans and all those kind of guys but when it started he was just hustling trying to get some traction wasn't he yeah. and it was you know the story of all that and then it was only it was years and years and years of hard work and no's and it not going well, which then suddenly started getting his momentum and then he got that exponential rise um, just through backing himself. So, you know, that was, it, it was nice to show that, you know, that's the journey of anyone who's successful. You know, you see that end bit and you think, oh, well, I'm not good enough. And, um, but, you know, as long as we put the hard work in, we put the time and the consistency in, then, you know, the, our opportunities will come. Everyone's opportunities will come, won't they? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just saw a book that I think you'll pick on the third one. So I'll, I'll save it because you went first. And if you don't say it, I'm going to say it. Okay. There you go. Um, my second book, um, I suppose, is actually one I'm listening to now and I'm almost finished, um, which is Soldier and uh, Respect is Earned by Jay Morton, who was on SAS Who Dares Wins. He was one of the first moles to go in um, for six days. He was living as an SAS, uh, as one of the, the numbers um or the dehumanized uh, people so he was moling basically um trying to pick up on people's reactions and people's behaviors outside of the, the confinements of um staff um yeah that's a really good book because even the chapters are broken down into opportunity um uh, leadership and it, each one then picks on that topic so it's like i, I listened to it a little bit um last few days and it's like mini podcasts like every episode uh, every chapter is like an episode of a podcast so um yeah really really good book but that's i think a lot of sas and um special forces books are all about mindset anyway like you've got to have a, a strong mindset to be a special force officer mm. um and just hearing the stories they go through that they go through things on a different level to everyone else and if they can manage and cope at that level then everything else is yeah. in life is a bit easier, really. Um, well, life has its challenges no matter what, but they build resilience to cope with those challenges, don't they? Yeah. So I kind of think, you know, the longer we hold problems, the more they take their toll on us, you know? So if yeah. you build resilience at that level, then you can cope with it in a quick way. And he's, he also, the bit I've listened to today, actually, like being relevant, is um, it's how you take the opportunities as well. Like he took a really positive opportunity uh, from going to war uh, he saw that as um, a need to do that as other people went there and it just basically destroyed the way they thought um, so it has a negative effect sometimes but he talks about that as well and how you can take the opportunity and take it into a positive way um, and all sorts he talks about drains and radiators as well that's a good one that's the people around you um, and we talk about negheads on our course all the time so if you're around a drain or a neghead they're constantly just it, think, thinking of the negative. And um, the bit he said it, that I really liked is if you said you've been to Tenerife, you know someone that's been, to, been 11 to 11 Reef. Reef yeah. <laughs> like, I've, I've heard it before. I was like, oh, I like that again. You but, know who used to say that? No. Emily used to say that. In oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She used to say that. And oh, I'm like, yeah, I know yeah. a few people yeah. like that. 11 um, Reef. But he said, they're drains. They're just, they're just, yeah, you don't want to be around them. Whereas yeah. you want to be around the radiators, the ones that radiate energy yeah. and they're infectious so yeah even though it's a sas book it's those bits in there that pick, you pick up and i mm. yeah i'm loving it at the moment yeah no good yeah no i wa definitely watch the programs i think i've read that book but a while ago um yeah but yeah maybe a revisit then um so my third see if it's the one i'm gonna go with Brendan Hall. Yes, yes, that's the one because he's here. <laughs> he's up on the wall. He's, the, camera, um, yeah. the camera won't get that, but we'll no, put a bit of B-roll afterwards so you get it. He's, he's transformational to us though. So Brendan Hall, and it's a book called Team Spirit. And um, he spoke at an event for us, probably like 2017, wasn't it? It was a while yeah. ago. It was one of our summer parties. Um, 
I don't know, where did he come from? Why did we get what did we get him to speak? Um, oh, what we, we saw him at Yeah, the, we saw yeah. him at uh, the CEO conference. Yeah, that's we? it. Yeah, we saw him speak on stage in a conference we were at in London and, you know, got in touch with him, Lord got in touch with him and asked if he'd speak at our summer, like, mindset type conference, business and mindset. You know, he did. He wanted to get into property, actually, didn't he? So yeah. we did a bit of a deal with him where we didn't pay him to come and speak. We taught him some of the property stuff. And he's been a really good personal friend um, ever since. We don't speak to him all the time, but, you know, we know that we couldn't... Yeah, there's a, there's yeah, a I know you're here. looking at this, but yeah. Yeah, he sent us this, didn't he? What does it say? So it says, a ship in the harbour is safe, but that's not what ships are for. Yeah. And he, he had that made for us, didn't he? Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, that we've got a quote on the wall, does it make the boat go faster by Brendan Hall? So, you know, we used to... We were notorious for saying yes to everything when we started in business. You know, we were yes men. We wanted to not miss an opportunity, shiny penny thing and all that. And, you know, that really resonated with us that you shouldn't take every opportunity. You should pick one what suits you, you know, is, is congruent with what we want and our beliefs. Because else you just make yourself busy all the time. You don't, yeah. you don't do any of it particularly well. So pick what you do well and, and commit to it. Um, and, you know, we've had a really good relationship with him. But the book is phenomenal. It's basically about um, he does a clipper yacht race. Um, he's the youngest captain to ever do it. There's, do you know how many teams? Can you remember how many teams there is? Um, I can't remember. Something like 20 or something. But yeah, all, There's a lot yeah. of teams. They've all got the same style of boat. So there's no um, there's no advantage to anyone's boat or equipment. Um, they've got basically um, um, untrained teams. They're not sailors at all. They've got one or two sailors and the captains are obviously experienced. And they even swap the teams about. Some people will do some legs. But it's an 11-month race all around the world. And he went, and the, some of the trials and tribulations that he had on that race yeah. were phenomenal. Like the stories in it, in the race itself, but all about leadership and you know how he prepared for it, how he went to the other race winners and took them out for dinner to take the lessons from them. Yeah. Then the, you know the team didn't particularly get on with him on the first leg, did they? And he had to manipulate the way that he felt about things, the way he led the team. You know, had to change his own philosophy on things in the race, um, and then a load of. You know, big stuff happened with other boats where he had to dive in and sacrifice the race for a while and go and help people. And he came back and, well, I won't, I won't spoil the result, but, um, you know, it, it's the whole journey of that. And it's a phenomenal book, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And even the, his story, which we won't go into, but um, the story of that race is like developments, like things will go wrong that you yeah. don't expect. Um, but it's how you come over them, like overcome them even, um, that gets you through that development and, yeah, there's a there's a finish line at the end of the race, um, and obviously developments have a finish line as well. So there's going to be challenges. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be all sorts. There's going to be a team you need to work with. So yeah, I, I related to developments by listening to that book as well. You relate to life for yeah. us. Though. Yeah, yeah. Everything in life, yeah. isn't it? You know. So you know, you set your plan, but it doesn't always go to plan, does it? But it doesn't mean you can't get to the finish line. Yeah. So yeah, you have to be adaptable. So yeah, brilliant book. That's um, Team Spirit by Brendan Hall. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my third, which you stole, um, so this is my fourth, I suppose, is uh, Built to Sell by John Warrillow, yeah. um, which is nothing to do with developments. It sounds like Built to Sell is like a development to, to sell on, um, but it's not. It's about building up a business or a brand or something to sell on um, later on, but it's how you build that business up. It's how you build the branding up. Um, it's the vision you've got at the end um, that you need to think of. Um Sorry. Yeah, it's been a long time since I uh, read that book. It's actually one of those ones that when I was training for the marathon, I ended up what, listening to pretty much the whole book in one run, um, which was yeah, which was awesome. But that was a really good book. Um, very easy listening. That's what I found about that book. That's why I ended up just kept running because I just really engrossed in the book. Um, but it's basically like a story of taking one person through the journey of trying to sell a business, um, but then a mentor telling him differently to go and sell it uh, and build it up first and then sell it uh, and end up selling it potentially for more so it's a great great book even if you're not in business i think the story and the the um uh, moral behind it i suppose is the same uh, for anyone so you, it's worth listening to but yeah built to sell is uh is up there brilliant brilliant um right there's our three audio audio books um right so physical books i'm gonna go down to these are two that I've recently read, so I think when you've recently read something, it's fresh in your mind. Let me have in fact, one of them I'm reading right now. Um, so I've got a bit of a cough. <coughs> so, my first one is um, it's a Ryan Holiday book, 
so he does a lot of stoic philosophy and all that kind of stuff if, if you you people listening to this haven't sort of come across ryan holiday he's got some great books out there but it was um, given to me to read from one of our um, masterminders um, james adams yeah he was a teacher he's got a very similar mindset to me um and i asked him because i know he reads a lot of books i said you know i got I'm coming up to a bit of a gap and he gave me a couple of ryan holiday ones but um, discipline is destiny is the first one and it's all about you know understanding that the problems we go through now have been there through the ages you know the romans the the old stoics they all had the same problems yeah uh, marcus aurelius he's used as an example quite a lot and um and it just shows about you know to not give in to you know some of the temptations that are around us you know eating drinking you know living the life um even then you you can find all that sort of stuff but if you can restrain from all that and do the basics in life and actually you know that can be much more rewarding so you know it's about doing small things consistently and there's just some really good stories you know even like queen elizabeth you know like you know <clears throat> just how she got up and kept that same demeanor and same you know didn't let her emotions run away for so many years yeah just doing you know that what she thought was right every day and she, you know, it, it, the, the examples are phenomenal, actually. So, but it, it, it's a really eye-opening book about how we can all change um, just by doing small things to make the change consistently. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to change the uh, the rules again. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do one book and one Netflix series or documentary. Because, um, again, that's it's content and listening in. So I'll do the book first. I don't know if this is an audio book. So I'm putting it down as a physical because I've never su- searched it and I read the physical book. So um, I really, really love hearing how businesses grew from a complete start, like an idea into where they are now. Um, and I love hearing about entrepreneurs that I love the autobiographies and things like that. So um, the business that I read the book about is, uh, it's called the book is called The Airbnb Story. And it's about Airbnb and how that started. Um, and it was literally someone's idea of in San Francisco, there was a, there was a festivals happening. Um, and they just said, oh, why don't we just rent out that room? Because no, there's no hotels about. And literally from then, um, yeah, it's actually air bed and breakfast because they put up an air bed. And that's why the Airbnb comes from. Um, and it's just an air bed and they put load out on there in downstairs as well and then just sold air beds um, or air bed spaces in the house and then just like, Oh, why don't we do this for why don't more people do this? Um, and it grew and grew and grew. They had some ups and downs as well. They had some challenges and, um, some security issues as well. But again, listening to that story is, is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, good. Yeah. So. Excellent. My second physical book is actually the one I'm reading now. Um, I heard about this quite a lot, you know, in our mastermind rooms, people share this stuff all the time. And I'd hear this and I'd just never get around to it. You know, it just wasn't really anything that was hitting home with me. And um, for some reason, someone must have said something. I picked it up. I, I bought a stack of books to carry on my 10 pages a day. And this was one of them. Um, and it's Atomic Habits um, by James Clear, isn't it? Yep. And um, I don't know. I think because I, I, I'm quite good with habits. I've done things like the seven, 75 hard. I think, you know, like I, get, I love the morning routine, as you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I suppose I always thought, well, what's it going to tell me what I don't always know? I already know, you know. Yeah. You know, I already do, you know, I try and have good habits and things like that. But it's been, I'm about halfway through and I'd advise it to anyone. Um, and it's about, you know, how, it's a, it's a lot about the mindset and the psychology behind habits. So you understand why we have these habits. You understand, you know, the, the, the human nature of how we have habits. And, I, and, and one thing, actually, I think it was yesterday I read this bit. And, um, and it was mind blowing and it just makes so much, he was talking about like, um, the environment that you're in creates that, uh, creates most of the habits that we do, you know? Yeah. So he was saying that, um, there was one of the presidents or something in the fifties, sixties went over to Vietnam when the war was quite a long, I think it, 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 I'm just going by memory, but it was about 16 years into the war, um, which was, you know, so long a war, it's not something you think of every day. And when they got over there, they realized that, um, that, something like 70% of the soldiers were heroin addicts, you know, and they yeah. looked into it because that was quite shocking. And they realized that the environment that they were in over there, that it was very available. It was, you know, what, what yeah. happened over there. So while they were over there, but the bit that was shocking 
is that when they came home, that um, ninety percent of those that came home were then able to just drop it overnight. That only ten percent of them were still heroin addicts when they got home into their normal environment. So when they were in the environment over there where it was normal, yeah. they couldn't they couldn't stop it. They were addicts. Yeah. But as soon as they came home and they got back to their normal life, where it wasn't what they did, it wasn't the people they associated themselves with. Yeah. It would have been harder to to find that yeah, influence is a big thing, yeah. I guess. So then, but the the pattern of their environment it made it easy to quit. And then you think of it like you know. Um, if you've got a drug addict or something here, you know, um, an alcoholic, something like that, they go to rehabilitation, that helps clean them up. But then they go back to the environment where they were a drug addict or an, an, alcohol, uh, an alcoholic. Yeah. They go back to the same environment and they go back to do yeah. the same thing. So, it's, you know, it, it would be the figures would be the opposite way around. Only 10% of them would come into, you know, come out of rehabilitation and keep it, you know. And it just made it really, you know, clear that it's, it's the science behind it. And like I say, the first half of the book's been absolutely brilliant to understand that science and psychology and in, instantly I'm sort of thinking of ways that I can clean my environment up, clean the, you know, the habits that I'm doing and habits stack them and things like that to make them more sustainable and to, yeah. you know, just, it's just about doing those little things again more consistently, a little bit like um, Discipline is Destiny. Yeah. So yeah, good book. No, awesome. And I suppose when you're saying that, it's, it's the same as like our mastermind is an environment where people sh- like strive from because the habits people are doing there is they are going out and finding sites because everyone else in that environment is finding sites. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of putting yourself, if you want to achieve something again, even if you're not in developments, but if you want to achieve something, just surround yourself with other people doing the same thing. Mm. Um, yeah, just bear you on. I thought you were going to talk about warrior book. That's when you said a book that wasn't an audio book. That's why I pointed over there. Cause it's on your desk. Oh, right, yeah. Um, but yeah, just do a quick talk about the warrior book. Um, well, yeah, a warrior book is almost like a self development training program, isn't it? That, um, and I did take a lot from that. Um, but yeah, it's big. It's 43 different 150 chapters. 150 quid as well, a book. Yeah, yeah. Someone sent me it, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the guys who came to our summer party, uh, Michael, he sent me it. So thank you if you're listening. Um, so yeah, it took me a while to get through it, though, because it's, um, or to start it, because it's like 588 pages or something. It's a big old yeah. book. But it's, um, yeah, it does. It covers a lot of different things in psychology. It does it in its own way. It tells its own stories. You know, it's a bit comical in some ways, you know. Um, it's Garrett White, who again is a character. He has he has got a lot of online following and that in America. So he runs a you know a training company himself and all that kind of thing. So you know it is good. And some of the some of the morning habits I do have spurred from that. But it's like anything, you know, you read things and bits of it resonate with you, bits of it maybe not so much. And then you take bits from all these different sources and put them together, yeah. don't you? And come up with your own way if you like. Yeah, awesome. Um, so finally, my last one was going to be a um, documentary. I don't know if it's Netflix or Prime, but one of those um, streaming websites, whatever. Um, but Founder. So Founder is about McDonald's. Again, same as the Airbnb story. I love, I love seeing how businesses started. I love the stories of how they grew. So Founder is all about McDonald's and how they um, grew to the biggest real estate company in the world. So not the biggest burger um, restaurant in the world or the, the chain they're the biggest real estate company in the world. They own most of the land um, in most of the, not most of the land in most of the countries, but a lot of land uh, around the world. And if you just think about the amount of, yeah, McDonald's around, I think there's yeah, loads and loads and loads. So, yeah, it's a good good series. Um, it's just a film, isn't it? It's not a series. Yeah, not a series. So it's a good film. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, yeah. it's a good watch. Again, so, easy but, list. Because yeah, I, I watched it and it didn't resonate with me as much for whatever reason. But maybe just the state I was in when I watched it. And it was only the other day because Joe, my middle one, loves his films, doesn't he? Yeah. And that was, he put that on a list of the ones that me and him want to watch. He wants to watch that with me. Yeah. So I'm pleased to go watch it again with an open mind. And, you know, because, yeah, I enjoyed it, but it didn't, I didn't walk away and it didn't hit me enough to mention yeah. it on here. So, like, the fact that you've seen it differently, I'll yeah. try and see if, you know, yeah, definitely. I saw it. Yeah. You've seen him bruise yet? No, mate, I'm not going to either. No. <laughs> I'm going to go to that story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it. Out of spite, I'm never going to yeah, watch awesome. it. Awesome. Cool. Well, um, well, there I did are... see a trailer. It looked pretty good, actually. It is so good. I'm, I'm only cutting my nose off to spot my face. Yeah, it is good. Um, so there are top three audio books and top two physical books and one book and one documentary. Um, I'm challenging you guys now to tell me your top three books uh, and then also suggest some books to us that we can listen to as well. Um, something that's helped you along the journey as well. Um, and we'll, we'll read them up. We'll read them up. We'll 
get them, listen to them. And um, yeah, we'll read some more. But yeah, challenge you guys to comment about your top three books. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Good episode.